More than 76 million viewings later, Kony 2012 really has made Ugandan rebel leader Joseph Kony a household name. For a bunch of college boys who like posing with guns, they haven't half made an impact. George Clooney, who appears in the viral video launched last week, said he wants Kony to be as famous as him. But Kony is already infamous. The first indictee named by the International Criminal Court for war crimes back in 2005, Kony has raped, enslaved, mutilated and killed thousands of children in Central Africa for the past 26 years. Last year alone, his group, the Lord's Resistance Army, displaced close to half a million people from some of the most remote and densely forested regions going. We have reached a crucial time. The campaigners want us all to buy wristbands at $10 a throw to signal our disgust. They argue exactly this kind of domestic pressure on the US delivers results. The video might have spawned a new populist cause, but the academics are apoplectic. They say the makers of Kony 2012 are typical of those who force the white man's burden onto stereotypes of a helpless Africa. They say the internet can't catch a criminal. They also say it is all too sickly sweet, playing on children and schmaltz. It all seems just too oh so simple, something with which Jason Russell, co-founder of Invisible Children, which made the film, in fact agrees. It definitely oversimplifies the issue. This video is not the answer. You know, this is not the answer. It's just the gateway into the conversation. And we made it quick and we made it oversimplified on purpose. You know, Steve Jobs, you know, said uh, simplicity is the highest form of sophistication. And it's really hard to make something simple. And we worked really hard to make it simple. So we're proud that it's simple. We like that. Russell knows, though, that stopping Coney is far from simple. Coney has escaped capture before and scuppered a series of peace talks. For years, many claimed Coney's existence even suited Uganda. It meant the army got funding so long as the target stayed on the run. It meant Uganda could sideline the Acholi people of the north, for years keeping them in detention camps in the name of keeping them safe. Well, when I met Kony, it was in 2006 in a clearing in eastern Congo. Uh, he'd come out of the bush, uh, flanked by his child soldiers, to meet a delegation of Ugandan elders who'd come to try to convince him to lay down his weapons. Uh, we know, of course, that effort failed. Uh, Joseph Kony is ruled by paranoia. Uh, much as we hear about his atrocities, in fact, his biggest motivation is probably fear or, or his instinct for survival. So the real danger, of course, is that sending more troops to catch him might prompt him to do what he's done in the past, uh, which is to launch a killing spree, effectively, of reprisals uh, to try to persuade his captors that it's just not worth coming after him. Today, the LRA exists in the murky borderlands between the Democratic Republic of Congo, the Central African Republic and South Sudan. War, weary and poor, these countries' armies are ill-trained and badly resourced. They are regularly accused of committing human rights abuses on the very people they are meant to protect. The governments have other priorities. The latest attempt to get Kony relies on getting them all to coordinate. The US sent 100 military advisers to the four countries last year. Obama's boys won't try to capture Kony themselves, so they say, but they hope logistics, intelligence and coordination might just make the difference. Others, including the United Nations and, yes, invisible children, are trying to boost communications on the ground, they are even distributing leaflets to persuade people no harm will come to them if they defect. More than half of those who flee the LRA say they have read these leaflets. Bit by bit, the noose is tightening. Katrina Manson, Financial Times, Nairobi.